During this episode, we dive into a great dialogue of the beauty of the singing church. And in this episode, we make the case for sacred music. And with me, I have Yvonne Chapman. That church is a singing church. We are called to worship God through song. He gives us the gift of music in order that we can return that gift to him through the offering of music. During this dialogue, we ask simple questions like, why music in the church? What is so special about singing a cappella? All of these questions are answered in a dialogue. Music is sacred when God is the object and the subject of our worship. From the congregation to the pastor, as you said, the pastor has that responsibility to choose the worship music. It is quite an awesome responsibility, but we as the congregants, we have responsibility to sing with joy. So stay tuned as we make the case for sacred music. Hey, everybody. If you are listening to this, you obviously like podcasts. And you probably like music too, right? Well, guess what? On Spotify, you can listen to all of that in one space for free. And you don't even need a premium account. That's awesome. Spotify has a huge catalog of podcasts on every topic, including the one you are listening to right now. You see, on Spotify, you can do several things. You can follow your favorite podcast so you will never miss an episode. You can even download episodes and listen to them offline, wherever you are. Easily share what you're listening to with your friends and family via Spotify's integration with social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, and even Snapchat. Just search for The Ear Podcast on the Spotify app or browse podcast in the Your Library tab and follow me so you will never miss another episode of The Ear. Spotify is the world's leading music streaming service and now it can be your go-to app for podcasting. The Ear, Evangelical and Reformed Christian Podcast. Welcome to The Ear, the Evangelical and Reformed, a Christian podcast that urges you to think deeper and draws you closer to God through faith. Through powerful sermons, teaching segments, and discussions, The Ear hopes to give you a different perspective on secular topics from a Christian worldview. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Please welcome your host, Brandon Queen. Good morning, podcast world, and welcome to yet another episode of The Ear, as we indulge in our series, The Beauty of the Local Church. And today's topic will be The Beauty of the Singing Church, Making the Case for Sacred Music with Miss Yvonne Chapman. Now, Miss Yvonne is the first female to ever submit an essay to the Westminster Society Journal, and actually the first female I've ever interviewed. So, Miss Yvonne, if you don't mind, can you tell us who you are? Sure. And I guess um, I have a tradition in entering into areas that women didn't go before because I've been a practicing attorney for quite a few years. And when I began my practice, there were not that many of us. I can't say that now because we're about I think about 60% entering law school are women now, so there is a huge difference. But in addition to being a practicing attorney, I have also taught college, primarily criminal justice and paralegal courses. For many years, I did that and also wanted to let you know I've been a lifelong Presbyterian, currently serving as a ruling elder at Faith Presbyterian Church in Germantown, which is a suburb near Memphis. And um, in the EPC level, I serve on the Permanent Judicial Commission. Nice. So you handle all the the laws and stuff, right? (laughs) All the law stuff, all the law stuff. In fact, it was at the EPC um, last year that I first became acquainted with the Westminster Journal. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I think I remember you now. (laughs) Okay, yes, I I went to the sessions that they held and picked up a copy of the journal. I, I, or I read one, I can't remember. 
and uh, met Matthew and some of the other folks around there. And I became interested in it. Nice. Well, I'll tell you what, I love, love music. I'm going to admit this, but um, I hope these listeners don't hear it. Uh, but yeah, your article was my favorite. <laughs> oh, hey, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's only because I really love music. And I think it serves a very vital part in the church. Well, uh, good. So, all right. So the first question is, why music in church? Well, you know, this question is so broad and so wide reaching. In fact, Brandon, it it is the theme. It begins the whole theme of the essay. And in fact, I think it might be easier as we go along to cover that question along with the others. But let me use this question to tell you why I chose the topic, making the case for sacred music for this issue of the Westminster Journal. As I mentioned, I met Matthew last year at the EPC when he put out a call for papers on the premise of the beauty of the local church. Immediately, I thought about music. I looked through the topic list he had, and guess what? Hmm. Nothing about music in his topic list. So I proposed this topic about scripture and song, uh, and the reason I did that is I had taught at my church. I teach adult Sunday school and I rotate with some other teachers. And one time I did one on script and song and I did a, about five lessons on the history of Christian music through the ages and covering topics such as the early Hebrew music, classical cantatas, oratorios such as Brahms, Requiem, Handel's Messiah. Um, about the Psalms inspired hymns we have in our hymn books at church, spiritual, like down by the riverside or go tell it on the mountain. And um, this little light of mine, by the way, was a spiritual. Some people don't know that. Huh. Um, contemporary music, including Andre Crouch, like my tribute. Love him. Michael Card, El Shaddai, plus some other pieces that I helped write inspired by scripture. So I, I did the lessons over a five-week period, including in that I, I played some of those pieces from uh, recordings I had. And and so having done that entire course and having done the research for that course, I thought to myself, well, I'll just write it into an essay. Well, lo and behold, <laughs> the resulting article is nothing like the class I taught. In fact, I only <laughs> very few snippets of some of the psalm story I learned about and you know, that kind of thing. That's how I picked the topic. And it, and he accepted it and, and decided it would be part of the journal. So I was real excited about that. Yeah. I mean, you know how Presbyterians are when it comes to music and the style of music and how music is performed. You get those that are, they become all uptight when a certain type of song is played in church. And then you have those who are more lax. And it's like, you know, that's still honoring God. You know how we, you know how we can get <laughs> but I, I really, I really enjoy, and I'm actually happy that this piece is in the journal. I'm not going to say everything we do is centered around worship, but it is. And music is one of those key parts that is centered around worship. So, uh, yeah, again, I, I like the fact that you added that. Thank you. And you're right about the choices of music. And, and I don't want this piece to be a divisive piece. In other words, I did put in there that this is not a matter of traditional versus contemporary or anything like that. But the church doctrine is very firm on what it ought to be. And I, and I explored that a bit when we'll look at some of the doctrine in a minute, but you can see, and I know the listeners will want to know that this does focus firmly on scriptural content and worship music. And I, as a lifelong uh, well, all my adult life being a member of a church choir, I believe that that is critical to our worship, to have scripture inspire us in that. I absolutely agree. So, Miss Yvonne, how can music inspire the church every Sunday? Now, this is probably, you're probably thinking, what kind of question is that? We go to church and we sing every Sunday as part of worship. But how can music inspire the church every Sunday? Well, I think that is what, what I am arguing here. My argument is that we are making the case for sacred music as part of corporate worship. When the church gathers together to worship God, the, the case I make is that worship music ought to be sacred. 
I present evidence and arguments to support that. Foremost are the examples from scripture that from the beginning of man's relationship with God, man has sung praises to worship God. Even Jesus sang a hymn with his disciples at the last Passover supper. And so throughout scripture, God tells us to worship him with music. We are created for this. We cannot worship without music. So music then inspires our worship. It is the core of our being and of who we are. I want to look at something in my article. Quote I put in there from this author, uh, Winfred Douglas. And her paper uh, was from 1937, but it is timeless what she says about the inspiration of music. And here she says, when we worship, I mean, we can speak with God in prayer, et cetera, but what she says is this, when we worship, what we need most is to forget self and in the depth of our being to see God and generously pour forth with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our mind, our todayum of rapt praise. For such profound outpouring from the depths of the spirit, words alone are insufficient. They need to be vitalized and intensified by, by that most spiritual of all the arts of self-expression, music. Wow. And, yeah, and, and that quote, I took that quote because it really got me right in the heart. And in fact, after I read that, I realized what she was talking about was the Shema, which, oh, you want to talk about the Shema? Yeah. <laughs> what is the Shema? Okay. <laughs> the, the Shema uh, is a term that is not used often in the Presbyterian Church or the Christian Church because it's, it is Jewish. Right. The Shema is a prayer which was is the center of the Jewish prayer services. They are supposed to repeat the Shema in the morning and in the evening. And uh, the Shema was mentioned by Jesus, in fact, in Mark um, chapter 12. And I put that quotation in, in the article as well. But when someone approached Jesus and said to him, what is the greatest commandment of all? And Jesus replied in saying, that the greatest commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord with, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. So Jesus told us that the greatest commandment is this, the Shema. And that uh, the Shema originally was in Deuteronomy chapter 6. And Jesus said, that is the greatest commandment, is, is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And so that is what Ms. Douglas was saying in this article. Hmm. That, you know, you need to forget who we are and worship God with everything in our being. Everything in our right. being. And do that through me. Right. You know, Presbyterians, we subscribe to the Westminster Confession of Faith. And... Chapter 26, uh, subsect two, uh, well, chapter 26 is talking about the fellowship of the saints. And part two says, by their profession of faith, saints are bound to maintain a holy fellowship and communion with each other in the worship of God and in the performance of other spiritual services for their mutual improvement. Now, I'm not going to read the rest of it, but, you know, even the Westminster divines knew how important music was was to the church and how important it is to the Christian as a way of expressing himself, his or herself, uh, you know, to God, the father. So yeah, music has been important since the beginning of time, actually. And if you take a look at a uh, Habakkuk, Habakkuk chapter two twenty, says this, but the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Now I find that strange that that particular passage is telling us to keep silent, you know, and you actually touched up on that in your article in the word document on page one, you said, to be clear, this chapter addresses the matter of sacred music and corporate worship. 
of singing when the saints gather to praise and worship God. This does not contain.